Hey everybody, it's Kingsley here. Just uh, we're having a little bit of a technical issue. Um, before I get Christian on, let me just uh, give me one second to configure some of the settings first, um, and then we'll get going right away. All right, here we go. Gotta love technology, right? Don't we all? So there will be no intro video today. It's uh, I think there's a little bit of a glitch in the system here, but uh, it does not stop us from doing what we want to accomplish. And uh, so welcome everybody to another episode of Remax uh, Facebook Live interview, The Voices in Real Estate. Uh, this live interview will take place weekly for viewers in the real estate industry to learn and become better real estate agents. Uh, within Remax, we believe in strength in numbers where people are open to share their experiences and knowledge with others. So Remax agents and the rest of the industry can help better serve our clients. So today's topic is actually a very, uh, I think personally, it's a sensitive one but also a very important one for a lot of us uh, that are in the real estate uh, industry and especially ones that uh, you know work really hard at what they do. So the topic is beating burnout. And our special guest today and uh, is Christian Toomey from Remax Landon in Calgary. So let me get him on the screen here. Hey, Hi, Christian, how's it going? Good, yourself? A uh, little, uh, little, little bit of difficulty with the technology today, but it looks like everything seems to be working, so so that's good. Good, yeah, I was uh, getting a little worried there, but uh, as long as it works, then I'm, I'm, I'm not happy. It's like no doubt. these yeah. days you, you would think we got technology down pat, but uh, and, and the trial and everything worked just, just fine for us yesterday too. It's, yeah. uh, you never know, so. How have you been? Very good, thank you. Um, it's uh, we're all you know adapting to this uh, new normal um, or whatever we're going to call it right now. Um, it's certainly a little bit different, but uh, I mean, th there is some business out there, um, and I've been picking it up, so I've been pretty happy. Awesome, awesome. Well, I don't know if you saw the comments of the pro promo kind of photo of you. Um, for this, but uh, Jeff Stewart is actually here too, and he did make a comment. Uh, and I'm supposed to throw you some curveballs to get you off uh, off your off your guard. So I'm going to start off with a really weird question: Is okay. do you think alcohol is a is a way to, to avoid burnout? <laughs> well, yeah, alcohol certainly is one of those um, uh, coping mechanisms that sometimes. <laughs> You know, we uh, lean over to, but I certainly wouldn't rec recommend it um, <laughs> to make a too regular of a habit. Now, I know during this COVID time, like there's, you know, we we get together on these Zoom calls and all this stuff, and some of them now we're doing these calls, and it's like, well, let's get together and just like reconnect and have a beer. Um, so it's it's pretty funny. I think the alcohol consumption in uh, in Canada, for sure, I'm not sure about North America, has probably gone up over the last 85 or 90 days, for sure. Yeah. Well, apparently it went up by 76 percent. So oh. you know, there's that's that's the type of business liquor stores are making the killing. Yeah. yeah no, so no. <laughs> and, and there's a couple offices that did bottle drives. They're like. I don't know how many bottles each family's got, but there's a certain lot more than the usual. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah. let's uh, maybe get started here. Um, just uh, give yourself a little bit of an introduction to the viewers here. Sure. Um, so they get to know who Christian is, right? Okay, so I appreciate that. I'll let you, I'll let you start. Um, so Christian Toomey, I'm with uh, Remax Landon, and I serve the community of Calgary um, and Okotoks, MD of Foothills, MD of Rocky View. Uh, for acreage type properties, uh, south of town for the most part. Um, I've been in Remax. I moved my business over to Remax in 2008. Um, I've been a licensed realtor now for 20 years. Um, I can't quite believe that it's been 20 years. You know, I got into the business when I was 25, and honestly, it feels like yesterday. Like it feels like last year I started. 
Um, you know, always learning. I'm a lifelong learner. I love to uh, learn and share and talk and, and get to know new people. Um, what else do you have down here for me? Uh, something fun and personal. Um, I have two great daughters, uh, Grace and April. Uh, Grace is 17 and April is turning 15 in September. And uh, our family has two cats, Jack and Jake, and uh, big old Homer, who's an old English bulldog and he weighs about 90 pounds and he's a big brute, but a, just a baby at heart. So, yeah. Oh, Kingsley, it looks like I can't hear you now. Did I lose you? Well, everybody, I don't know if I'm still on here or not, but looks like we've dropped Kingsley. I just got a text from him. He says he's coming back in. So anyways, I'll keep talking. Um, so yeah, I serve uh, Calgary and, and Southern Alberta. Um, oh, look, we even got notes on the side of this thing. This thing's slick. Jeff Stewart's there. He says, hi, Caleb, awesome. Um, is drinking during Zoom calls acceptable, Jeff says. Absolutely. You can totally do that. Uh, Dan Gonan, awesome. Uh, Stephen, um, hi, Kingsley and Christian. Uh, John Cooper, hi, Toomey. There he is. He's back. The yeah. one and the only. You know, Kingsley, I've got to tell you, I think, Kingsley, I got to tell you, I think that you could have the best hair in the entire Remax network. I try. Like, I'm trying to, I'm trying so hard to be a little bit like you, but it just doesn't come off the same way. You've got the best well, hair. I and I actually got my wife to kind of um, cut, cut the hair for me for well, the past uh, couple months. I you were going to tell me so. your wife does your hair. I was going to be a little scared there. <laughs> no, no. So sorry about that. Uh, it's just like a little bit of a computer issue, and hopefully, it's uh, everything is will be fine from here onwards. So, kind of just, uh, I, I guess, we kind of continue the conversation. So, maybe going back to the beginning where you started real estate, uh, what was kind of your mindset coming in, like goals wise, and like what were what were you thinking? You yeah. and you were pretty young too. So, yeah, um, like I said, when I came in, I was twenty five. Um, as far as goals went, I mean, I didn't really know what I was getting into. Um, I started out of course by door knocking and cold calling. And I remember at that time, um, I belonged to a different company and I remember going back to the manager and being like, this is brutal. Like, this is not for me. Like I can't do this job. And he just kept throwing me back out there. And little by little within a couple months, like within, I think about four months, I was the top guy in that particular office. Um, wow. And it was just, it was the, um, you know, I come from a sports background and um, I used to play hockey. So it was one of those things where I was always the first guy on the ice and the last guy to leave. And I, I always kind of, you know, brought that over to my real estate um, career and just worked hard. You know, I, I don't think that there's many that can outwork me. Um, a lot of people works, you know, there's the old work smarter, not harder. And I've missed the smarter part somewhere along the line, but <laughs> I certainly work harder. Right. Um, but it's just, everything takes a lot of work. And, and I know when I first came in is that I just wanted to make a, a you know, a good living. Um, and, uh, as far as goals go, I think it was just more to learn, learn the business more than anything. Right. And I guess like a lot of like the younger people coming in right now nowadays, it's like, cause we, we run the SAO every, uh, well, during the normal times, I guess, uh, right. eight times a year, seven to eight times a year. And I'd love to talk to a lot of uh, people coming in that are in their twenties. They're like, I'm here to dominate. I'm here to be the best. And it, it's, it's awesome to see that energy. And I'm sure you back then you thought probably similar in that sense, right? You just want to come in here and do well. Um, but fast forward, yeah. you know, many years from now on, like where you are today, obviously your mindset has changed and how has that changed and, and so forth? You know, it's funny through a career, when you look back, um, 
so you have the the initial stages 20 years ago you're first coming in so what's the goal the goal is to learn and to be better and and to get your hat the handle of everything um and then you know as you go there's different life events or different events in your career that happen um that change those goals or make those goals develop when i moved my business over to remax in 2008 i remember the, the brokerage that i belong to right now remax landon when i joined that it was like joining, like the best analogy that I used was, it was like joining the 1980s uh, Edmonton Oilers. There was all these guys, like there was the Gretzky and the Curry and the Messier. And like, there was all these guys that I knew, I knew their names from the, you know, the general community where I live. And what I wanted to do at that point was to compete, to compete at that high level and to be part of something, you know, a little bit bigger than just myself. Right. Um it was exciting. It was very exciting to do that. Um, and that's kind of where I, where I, uh, where I launched my Remax career and, uh, everything took off from there. And now you, you, you're one of, one of the Gretzky's in the office. Well, I would, I don't know about <laughs> that. <laughs> um, you know, I've, I've been very blessed in my career. I've been very lucky. Um, I, uh, um, you know, in the time that I've been there, I've made the top 10 in my office. Um, I think I'm more of a boards and corners guy than a, than a center that's putting the puck in the net all the time. You know, I've never been number one, uh, right. but I've always been there. I've always been in the top 10 and uh, my goal has never really been um, to be the biggest or the best. Um, my goal has always been um, customer centric and, and how can I serve my people the best? And, and that has grown uh, to a point now where that is solely my focus um, my focus now is, is wholly on my, cu on, on my customer. Exactly. And, yeah. and, and actually this kind of mindset that you have is it gets you, you know, gives you consistency throughout, right? Cause your customers obviously will always change, but if, as long as you have the right mindset, um, you're very consistent in terms of, you know, what you want to accomplish and things like that. And obviously you've been around for a while and there's got to be some challenges uh, throughout. And I mean, this topic here, and it, it's the burnout topic. It, it's something that actually yeah. we talked about uh, previously. And and, it, and a lot of the real estate agents can probably relate to this, but it's just doesn't get talked well, you know, enough, right? Because um, we always want to present an image that, you know, <laughs> We're professional and you know we're good at what we do but there's so much stuff that goes behind the scenes um that creates stress or anxiety for people um so just to kind of what 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 are some of the i guess you, you know in, in your in your case what happened you know to, to be between those times until you get to this point that where you have a more balanced mindset and what was your thoughts going through what was the challenge that you had um so I guess to step back a little bit is, um, so I came over to Remax in 2008, um, by 2000 and I'm going to make sure I get my dates right here by 2011. Um, I made hall of fame, uh, by 2000 and I think it was 14, 2015, I did lifetime achievement. So things kind of skyrocketed for me. And in that time, um, what happened is, um, uh, like I have a good resale, um, resale real estate business, um, but I also um, have a great connection with one of Calgary's largest home builders, and and I've done a terrific amount for them. So, um, what was happening was I was I was kind of playing both fields. I was doing new home construction sales at the same time as resale uh, real estate, um, and and I think it was about 2011. The builder approached me and said, "Hey." We've got a 40 lot project up here. We think you'd be perfect to sell it. What do you think? So I was like, okay, yeah. So I brought on a young associate from Remax Landon and uh, we went out there. He, he just started in the business. So we went out there together and uh, knocked it off. We knocked it off probably in about, I don't know, eight months, something like that, maybe six months. It wasn't very long. We sold out the 40 units. Wow. So at the end of and while we were doing that, of course, keeping up our um, resale real estate business, which was separate from each other. So we only connected on the new home side. And it was more of a mentorship role for me where I was trying to, you know, um, uh, bring a young guy along and, and teach him a little bit. And he's become a, an excellent realtor. 
Um, so we had about a year off from there. And then uh, we had another project come up and the builder came to me and said, would you please do this? So, you know, sure, why not? It worked last time. Why don't we do this? But in, in this case, instead of 40 lots, we had several hundred. Wow. And, and uh, those several hundred lots, uh, we moved through at a rapid rate. Um, and, you know, that's kind of what took me into that uh, lifetime achievement in such a short amount of time. Um, so in, in the years, it would be 2000, probably 2012, 2013, 2014, each one of those years, I was doing over a hundred transactions. Um, I think my biggest year is 120 or something like that. And, um, I had a, you know, a part-time kind of, uh, associate in the show home, not connected to my resale business. And I had a part-time, um, assistant, which was more helping me on the on marketing than really on paperwork, if you will. Right. So where I found myself was doing 120 transactions by myself. Um, I was easily at the office by 8 a.m. if not earlier. And often, if not for weeks on end, I would not be getting home until 12, if not two in the morning. Oh wow. Um, and that was seven days a week. And I would just work straight through. Um, so, you know, at one point there, um, what, end, what ended up happening is we were running one show home together and um, another show home kind of a, on the other side of town, it got shut or it, the guys left, they quit. And uh, I decided um, that I was going to take it over as well. So now I was running two pieces, two different locations. Um, mentoring this young fella uh, who's now quite experienced um, and running a resale business. And uh, it was just, it ended up being too much. And did you uh, have a life? No, no, that's the whole thing. Like zero. <laughs> and, and I think that's, that's why this is such an important topic is that, you know, th this industry is always geared to or driven towards, um, you know, transactional and do as much as you can and make as much money as you can. But no one ever really stops to talk about how are you doing? Um, how are you? How is your life? And when you're in that mindset, you, you don't even care. Um, you're just looking, you're looking for the transaction and you're looking for the dollar and it. And uh, it ended up burning me out for sure. Yeah. So I would say by, by, you know, 2000, 14, 15, probably 2015 is about where I had enough and uh, found myself in that burnout kind of cycle for sure. Yeah. And, and, and I know that there's a lot of uh, real estate agents that like, like you mentioned, it's, it's transactions, right? You're just chasing what's the next deal. Cause in a lot of agents mindset is like, well, if I got a next, if I got another deal, why don't I take it? Right. So, but then when, the, where, where do you draw the line? Like, like between balancing your life and, and just keep chasing the next deal. So how has, how have you made, you know, you've always made some adjustments in terms of, you know, balancing your life and not, burning out because it doesn't do anybody any good when you burn out right you just quit at, or or you just give up at some point if you're completely exhausted so yeah. how have you adjusted mentally i guess and and both family personally um and your business to kind of have that more of a balance um that's a good question and um you know in the beginning i said uh, when i started this career you know i was trying to learn the business and i think now i'm trying to learn more about me um, and you know, the first, the first step to figuring out when things start to go wrong is you start to look at, at yourself and figure out well, what's happening and, and acknowledging that maybe it's burnout, maybe you're exhausted. So at that point, like I always, um, see real estate, the way I kind of see it in my mind is like the guy at the circus that's spinning plates. So in real estate, you have a family plate, you have a, a business plate, you have, you know, um, faith, you have um, learning, you have all these different plates kind of going at the same time, you know, keeping your home up, cutting the ground, they have all this stuff going on at the same time. And what happens, Kingsley, let, let me ask you, what happens to the guy at the circus if he starts to overcompensate on one of the plates? 
You what lose happens? everything. That's right. Everything falls. Yeah, everything so falls over, apart. You overcompensate to that to that business plate, and you're really trying to make it spin really fast, and you're trying to get it going. Well, boom, the family plate goes down. Boom, the health plate goes down. Boom, your faith goes down. Everything you know that's important in your life starts to drop off. Yeah. So you know, all of a sudden, you've got to step back and acknowledge that things aren't right. And in my case, I think what happened was, um, you know, when I looked, I was missing a tremendous amount of what was happening with my family. I was just not there. Um, and, it, and really that should be my priority, right? Not making like in my mind, I kind of had it backwards. I was saying to myself, well, my priority is making money for the family to make sure that the family has everything that they have. But at the end of the day, if you ask my kids or if you ask my wife, what was most important, it was to have me, you know, it's not necessarily to have, to have all the money in the world. It's to have dad, right? It's to have dad there. So. Once I acknowledge that, then slowly but surely you start to make choices and adjustments that will reflect that. Okay. But it's a process. Um, again, um, work smarter, not harder. And sometimes I, you know, I work harder and not smarter, but it's taken <laughs> me a long time. And it's it's a lifelong learning lesson. So here we are, let's call it five years later. I'm still working through it. There's still days where I'm at the office till two in the morning because I'm crazy and I've got to get things done. Like I'm the type of guy, if I read a book, I will not put that book down until I finish a chapter. It doesn't wow. happen. I have to finish the chapter. I could be in bed like dying, like falling asleep. I have to finish the chapter. I have to finish what I'm started. I have to get that deal handed in. I have to do things. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Even when I look at it, like I can say that to you, I still have to do it. Um, so it's a lifelong learning lesson. And slowly but surely, I've made some changes. And, um, you know, I'm not perfect, not at all. And I think you know, if you ask my kids or my wife, they would be probably the first one to tell you that I'm not perfect. And I'm very driven. And I'm a, a workaholic. But at the same time, I'm trying to be better. Um, and that's really all you can do. And by doing that, I feel happier. Right. Um, and really, when you look in here, this is what matters. This is the, um, you, you know, at, at the end of this life, you have all this money. A good friend of mine says to me, Christian, you can't, you can't take it with you, man. You can't take it with you. So at the end of this life, when you look back, if this is happy, if this is full, then great. Right. Your wallet, I don't know. You know, right. we make a good living. We work very hard. Um, but I think it's the what's inside you is what counts for sure. Right. And I like the fact that you started off by, you know, telling people to, to start looking at yourself, right? Um, what what do you really want to accomplish in your life? And that's that's where it starts, right? Um, a lot of times people, they, they work so hard that they forget that, you know, ultimately, well, my life, it's about family, right? For example, yeah. for, for you and even for myself, right? And so how much, I mean, in, in, anytime you work hard, there's there's got to be sacrifice to be made at oh, some yeah. point. And time is usually what, the sacrifice is right, um, but even as you get more experience, like yourself, I mean, for the younger for the younger agents, maybe they don't have a family; they can work harder. But as time goes on, you have more responsibility in life, and you ha you develop a new goals, like you know, raising your kids or spending time with your kids. Then you start to change, and and you become smarter anyway. So uh, you know, <laughs> shouldn't have work equally as hard. I mean, it's, you still work hard, but. Uh, um, but it, it just change everything just changes, right? And you just have to start to evaluate step take a step back and evaluate what's what's what are your priorities, right? Sure. And the thing is, no matter how much money, you really can't buy time. It doesn't it's matter very, who absolutely. you are. Yeah. So yeah. time is what you, if I mean there's times where you have to sacrifice something, but at the end of the day, just focus on what you ultimately want to accomplish in life, right? Because Money and work is only like a more of a process. It's not the, it shouldn't be result of what it is. For sure. Right? Yeah. So no, that's a, it's a good, good, good comment. Uh, good suggestions for everybody here. Um, so 
we're coming up to almost half an hour, and uh, so I want to know what the Christian's uh, Remax hustle tip is. Um, okay. Could be anything that's related to the topic or not. It's up, really up to you. Um, it's something that's more unique to what you want to share with people. Great. Um, my re uh, Remax hustle tip. Um, I think that, especially today, there's so much going on uh, in the world. And I mean, it's just, we're constantly being inundated with all of this information. I find myself like daily, I listen to um, uh, talk radio. I listen to uh, news radio. And, you know, when we're driving around, we spend a ton of time in our cars and often, or even, um, what do you call it? Audio books. When like I'm driving around, podcasts, I do that. Audio, yeah. Podcasts, all that kind of stuff. And what I find is, is that sometimes it's just so much information overload that my hustle tip is park it some days. Just park it and put on some music and listen to music because music will invigorate you. It'll bring you back. It's good for the soul. It's good for the heart. It's good for your energy. Uh, it can pump you up. It can make you think. Um, and it really gets that other side of your brain going where, you know, that art side of your brain where you start to think and you start to relax and you start to, um, <clears throat> you know, bring in different thought or new thought. It, I mean, if you're thinking of making a change in your business um, and all you're doing is podcasts and, and uh, audio books, turn on some music. And you'll be amazed at how your brain will open up and take on new ideas. So that's my uh, that's my tip: is that sometimes park the news, park the audiobook, <laughs> and listen to some music. That's a good uh, tip, and and actually, it's something that I always say too when people, you know, especially the COVID time, where everybody's doing Zoom and audiobooks and podcasts and things like that, because it's something you have, you can do virtually right and sure. i always suggest people like don't overload yourself right and because the whole point of learning is to be able to absorb it and then reapply it back to your life or your business but if you overload yourself you don't remember anything right because you're fo you oh. lose focus of what you're learning and if you can't reapply it back into your life it it's everything that you absorb is basically pointless so Go at your own pace. And like you said, just listen to music. Actually, I listen to these days. I don't know if you know the song or your kids maybe listen to it. It's uh, Dance Monkey by Tony. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually a pretty relaxing song. You just got to yeah. jump around while you drive. But uh, yeah. but no, it's a great song. <laughs> um, yeah. There is a question from uh, Jeff Stewart here. Um, Christian, you had a rapid rise in the business as an agent. What uh, That typically translates into working long hours to build your network. Did you find that you eventually hit a critical mass where the business was coming to you? And if so, what did that look like? So I guess uh, Jeff is saying, you know, it's like at some point in your career, you know, instead of you chasing after the next deal, there's people that come, business coming to you and how, what did that look like and so forth? Yeah, um, so I just the other day um, sold a condo um, uh, condo downtown to um, my one of my very first clients. It's his son. Um, so I was thrilled, right? Now all of a sudden it's it's turning over that way where I'm now I'm seeing um, the children of some clients that I started with. He was one of the very first sales. I remember saying to him, um, you know, I can work with you because I got nothing else. Like I will give you everything I got because I'm the, you know, I've got nothing else going on. Um, so he was like, oh yeah, that's great. And now, you know, a uh, number of transactions later and uh, now his son has come into the scene. So I think that's really cool. So yes, um, the business does come back. Um, but I'm still chasing business. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm still trying, uh, chasing business all day long. Um, I'm ch still trying to, um, you know, replace names in my database that have maybe fallen off. Um, there's certainly, you know, I don't have a hundred percent retention. I can guarantee you that. I don't know if anybody does. Um, but I, you know, I'm always trying to, to meet and to network and to get more people onto my database where I can try to keep in contact with them the best that I can. I'm always trying 
uh, to increase my network. There's no doubt about it. Moreover, I think one thing that's important to say is that one thing that I do notice is um, right now in real estate, there's, there's a epidemic of us realtors that are not trying to make a connection with other industry members. Um, and by only texting your thoughts on an offer or only emailing your thoughts on an offer, you're doing yourself. And frankly, I think you're doing your client a disservice. Pick up the phone, meet belly to belly, do some things where you can articulate why your seller, seller or your buyer is countering at this. The why is so important. It's not just an order. It's you're trying to convince the other side and negotiate with them. Like the, there's nothing worse than when you get a text and it's just a number. It's not a hello, not a nothing. It's just a reply with a yeah. number. It's like, well, what is that? Like, where do you come from that? Pick up the phone, um, even meet people. Like, can you imagine meeting people? Um, and now you have a lifelong connection within your own market where you can actually share ideas. Um, there's some awesome realtors in Calgary that that uh, I get together with and, you know, have chicken wings or have a beer with or whatever and uh, um, share ideas. Like, people that are open to share ideas, like, look, look within your own market. Sometimes there's some pretty great people out there. For sure. Well, I think there's a stat that uh, seventy percent of the agents don't kind of follow up or, or communicate with their database or people on their contact list, right? So that's a huge number, seventy percent of people. So, I mean, it's it, at the end of the day, it's it's a relationship business. So make sure to get as, as long as you keep mean that effort into maintaining the relationship yeah. then once i guess to answer go back it's i mean you answered it too but to, it, it'll get to a critical mass that people either themselves or their next generation will go back to you um and you know want to buy or sell home right so that's just uh, the way it works but you have to keep putting that pressure on not pressure but keep putting on the gas pedal to maintain those relationships with people that you met so. yeah for sure for sure. And I, as far as time goes, I would say probably about five years. Um, I think that, you know, once you start into it um, and you, you know, you're going to look at your circle of influence first and then try to build your network out from that. Um, and, you know, your first sale is likely going to sell in probably three to five years. So that turnover doesn't happen until that time. But uh, once it starts, it just builds and just to continue to build that network of people. And it's, it's a network of, of um, you know, your clients. It's a network of uh, realtors. It's a network of even realtors in your own community um, to try to be out there and be a positive influence on everyone, for sure. Right. Thanks. So, well, it comes to an end to our episode. Thank you. And uh, sorry about all the tech issues, everybody, and Christian. I had to leave them, leave them hanging for a minute or so there. <laughs> uh, but I'm sure Christian was a great host while I was gone too. So, <laughs> so thank you very much. And I uh, hope everybody learned something here. And uh, I'll see all of you sometime uh, next week again. Okay. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Christian. Thank you very much. If anyone ever wants to reach out, they certainly can uh, reach out through Facebook or even just call me or email me anytime. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.